gentlemen. Good day and welcome to Dampur Bio Organics Limited Q2 FI24 Earnings Conference Call hosted by SKP Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Naveen Agrawal, Head Institutional Equities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to welcome you on behalf of Dhampur Bio Organics Limited and SKP Securities to this financial results conference call. We have with us Mr. Kautam Goel, Managing Director, and Mr. Nalan Gupta, CFO. We'll have the opening remarks from Mr. Goel followed by a Q&A session. Thank you, and over to you, Gautam. Thank you, Naveen. Good afternoon, all, and thank you for joining us on this earnings con call to discuss the operational and financial performance for the quarter and half year ended 30th September 2023. The company's results and investor presentations have already been uploaded on the stock exchanges and the company's websites. And we hope that you have had the opportunity to go through them. I will begin with an overview of the current status of the industry and the company's operations, which will be followed by an update on the financial performance by our CFO Nalin. Let me first begin with a brief outlook on the domestic sugar scenario. India's, India's production for sugar season 2022-23 is esti estimated to be around 32.8 million tons, of which about 4.1 million tons of sugar was diverted into ethanol production, with the domestic consumption estimated at around 27.9 million tons and exports of about 6.4 million tons. The domestic sugar stocks are estimated to be lower than 5.6 million tons at the end of sugar season 2022-23. For the new sugar season 23-24, India is expected to produce less than or around 29 million tons of sugar. The primary reason for a lower production is due to the 29 million tons is keeping in mind about 4 million tons of sugar will be diverted into ethanol. So sugar equivalent, about 33 million tons, is expected to be produced. The primary reason for a lower production is due to the inconsistent rainfall in the major sugar-producing states of Maharashtra and Karnataka. According to the various surveys, this deficit in rainfall has adversely affected the planting of the Atsali crop also in this region. This has the potential to further reduce the cane availability in Maharashtra and Karnataka for 24-25 season. We therefore believe the sugar prices should remain firm in the near future. The global sugar production during the sugar season 23-24 is expected to be around 175 million tons as compared to a production of approximately 177 million tons in the previous sugar season. Overall, a tight sugar production scenario has driven up the international sugar prices, which are now hovering at around 27 US cents per pound for rolls and $720 per metric ton for white sugar, the highest since 2011. Brazil will be the major contributor, will be the major contributor to the global sugar market with an estimated production of about 41 million tons of sugar as compared to 33 million tons of sugar in the previous year. This increase is on account of higher cane availability, good weather conditions, and the sugar ethanol mix favoring the sugar segment. The current ethanol parities in Brazil are at around 19 cents versus the current market price of 27 cents. Thailand is estimated to crush a about 75 million tons of sugar cane, with a sugar production ranging between 7.5 to 8 million tons for the sugar season 23-24, lower than the production of about 10 million tons of sugar for the previous season. The EU, including the UK region, is estimated to produce about 16.8 million tons of sugar 
for the sugar season 23-24, up from 15.5 million tons of sugar produced in the previous season. This year, the global deficit in production over consumption is expected to be in the region of 4 million tons as compared to a marginal deficit of about a million tons for last year. Now, moving to ethanol. Out of the 564.5 crore liters finalized by the OMCs for the ethanol supply year 2022-23, which was from December 22 to October 30th, October, 31st, October 23, against a total requirement of 600 crore liters, contracts for 565.24 crore liters have been executed till August 2023. Against the above, 413.47 crore liters have been lifted by the OMCs till August 2023, with an average blending of 11.72%. The breakup for the ethanol contracted and supplied for the sugar sector, the contracted quantity was 393.36 crore liters, and they have supplied 327.43 crore liters, which is about 83% of the contracted quantities have been supplied till August. The grain segment contracted for 171.89 crore liters and have supplied 86.06 crore liters, which is approximately 50% of the contracted quantity supplied. And uh, the total cumulative supplies have been 413.49, which is about 73% of the contracted quantities. Recently, the supplies from FCI had, had been stopped by the government during the last week of July 23. But to ensure sustainable ethanol supplies from grains, government increased the ethanol prices, especially increased the ethanol prices from maize by declaring additional revenues. The total incentive amounts on the damaged food grains and maize will be rupees 8.46 per liter to rupees 9.72 per liter. The new prices, effective 22nd of August 23, are. The prices for the damaged food grains, which were 55.54, are now revised to 64.64 rupees per litre. For maize, they, from 56 rupees 0.35 per litre, they are now 66.07 rupees a litre. And for surplus rice, they are 58.50 to 58.50 for the FCI rice. Yeah. As informed in our last calls, our small unit is being expanded to 12,500 TCD and Meal Gunj to 9,000 TCD. And we are on track to commence this year's crushing with the expanded capacities. We expect the crushing to start in the first week of November and hope this higher crushing capacity, coupled with the cane development work, should result in improved recoveries and overall crush. Also, as mentioned earlier, Going forward, we are bullish on the sugar prices for the next couple of years and have therefore planned to reduce the diversion of sugar into ethanol for this year. As we see the relative economics shifting in favor of sugar, especially in our region, the company has decided to hold the establishment of the proposed distillery in our Mirgan unit for now. As the diversion of, diversion of sugar to the distillery is reduced, this could present us with an opportunity to operate our distillery in a smallie with alternate feedstocks like broken rice and maize. Therefore, the company is evaluating the possibility of converting our distillery in a smallie to a multi-feed distillery. I will now move on to our working. In spite of a revenue growth from 542 crores to 666 crores for this quarter, we had a tepid performance due to substantially reduced profits before tax of about 1.23 crores as compared to 10.32 crores for the corresponding period last year. The profits for the six month ended were reduced from 22.72 crores to 18 crores. The key reasons for this drop in profitability are reduced margin in a biofuels business mainly on account of higher transfer pricing of molasses and a greater share of revenue from e &S. Front ending of certain capital expenditures, including the repair and maintenance expenditures as compared to the same period last year. And as mentioned in our previous calls, a 
our sugar recovery for this sugar season that went past were lower due to the severe pest infestations in our Asmoli and Mansurpur factories. This lower recovery adversely affected our cost of production, which would otherwise have further boosted our margins in the sugar sector. This pest infestation is now, has now been controlled, and we are hopeful of improved results this year. I will now hand over the call to Nalin for an update on our financial performance. Thank you. Thank you, Gautam, and good afternoon, everyone. Let me take you through our standalone financial highlights for Q2 and H1 FY24. Revenue for Q2 FY24 stood at 666 crores, registering a growth of 23% as against rupees 542 crores in Q2 FY23. EBITDA for Q2 FY24 stood at rupees 21 crores as against EBITDA of 28 crores in the corresponding quarter last year. EBITDA margin for this quarter stood at 3.1%. For H1 FY24, revenue stood at 1,342 crores, up by 29%, as against 1,037 crores in H1 FY23. EBITDA for H1 FY24 stood at 62 crores, with an EBITDA margin of 4.6%, as against an EBITDA of rupees 63 crores in the corresponding period last year. Profit after tax stood at rupees 12 crore in H1 FY24. Moving on to the segmental highlights, sugar segment reported a revenue of 459 crores in Q2 FY24, as compared to 448 crores in Q2 FY23. EBIT margins uh, stood at 32 lakhs in this quarter, as against loss of 4.7 crores in the corresponding quarter last year. Revenue in H1 FY24 was at 914 crores as against 876 crores in H1 FY23, which is up by 4.3% year-on-year basis. Sugar sales in this quarter stood at uh, 0.95 lakh tons against 1.05 lakh tons in the same quarter of the previous fiscal. Average sugar relation improved to Rs. 38,100 per ton in Q2 FY24 from 35,750 in Q2 FY23 pattern. Sugar inventory as on 30th September 23 stood at 0.1 lakh tons of sugar, which has been valued at 34,904 per ton, as against our inventory of 1.06 lakh tons as on 30th September 22, which was valued at 35,228 per ton. During this quarter, we generated 12.33 crore, uh, 12 million units of power against 10.99 million units in the same period last year. Now moving to buy full segment. This segment reported a revenue of 157 crores in this quarter as against 145 crores in the same quarter of previous fiscal, which is up by 8.6% YOY basis. Buy full segment, ABIT margins, stood at 14.47 crores in this quarter. For H1 FY24 revenue stood at 312 crores as against 276 crores in H1 FY23, which is up by 13% YOY basis. We sold 26.45 million bulk liters of ethanol at an average relation of 56 per liter. In country legal segment, uh, revenue stood at 143 crores in Q2 FY24, as against 30 crores in the Q2 FY23. EBIT margin stood at 1.75% in Q2 FY24, as against negative EBIT margins in the corresponding quarter last year. Revenue was at rupees 285 crores in H1 Our long-term loans stood at 240 crores as of 30th September 2023, as against 246 crores. Last year, uh, sorry, sorry, 246 crore, uh, 246 crores as on 31st March 23. The company has repaid long-term loans of 117 crores during the first half. Long-term debt equity ratio remained at 0.25 times. Due to lower inventory, we have surplus funds of 20 crores as on 30th September 23 against the 260, 260 crores of outstanding working capital position as on 30th September last year. Long term and short term rating of the company continues to be assigned by A plus with 
outlook is stable by clear ratings with that i would request the moderator to moderator to open the floor for the questions from the participants please thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles participants you may press star and 1 to ask a question The first question is from the line of Nitin Dharmavat from Oram Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Am I audible? Yeah, you are audible. Please. please go yes, ahead. sir. Uh, sir, the subdued performance during the quarter you attributed, if I am not wrong, uh, to the biofuel. So, uh, what do you see the trajectory during the uh, next uh, two quarters or the second half of the year for this? Is it going to remain same, or are we going to improve over here? So, uh, it is. Thank you for this, uh, attending a call. Uh, in the sec, in the next quarter, we do believe the margins could slightly improve for two reasons. The raw material that we have on stock is uh, the value of the raw material remains the same. But in the coming quarter, this current year, the government plans to the government has changed the molasses or the ethanol year from November to of 31st October, 1st November to 31st October. so we do, there should be a price revision we are expecting a price revision in the region of about 2 rupees that is what our hope understanding is so that should have an upward uh, impact on our realization also when the sugar season starts the cost of production reduces so you could have a two fold increase on that account secondly uh, with the new sugar season we are also evaluating the blend that we will use as i mentioned in my talk we will be diverting less sugar into ethanol we would probably be making some ca and some b heavy molasses so depending on that blend we do hope to see a decent margin in this business and overall we remain uh, uh, sort of focus and bullish on the segment i understand sir uh, my second question is about uh, the debt uh, last quarter uh, to, to the first quarter of the year we have repaid the uh, uh, quite a, you know substantial amount of debt Uh, this quarter, I did not see that. In, in fact, I saw a little bit uh, uh, upside in the, in the uh, overall debt amount. So, what is the uh, view of the management? Are we uh, looking forward to retire the debt uh, substantially, or are we going to increase this, uh, considering the fact that we have now, uh, you know, put our capex on hold? So, two things, uh, Nitin. Uh, Nitin, the first is the capexes that were already on. going because of increasing our capacity if you recollect during our last call we had mentioned and as i mentioned in this call we were expanding our existing sugar units a smally to 12 12500 and mirganj to 9000 tcd so there was certain amount of debt required for this expansion uh, the exact numbers right after this nalan will give you but obviously if our capexes have reduced we have uh, Sort of held back on the expansion or setting up of a new distillery that we do believe will have a you know it will give us surplus cash flow which we do think will be utilized to retire some debt. But Nalan will be able to shed more light on the numbers. Yeah, so Nitin, we have paid 117 crores in this H1 retired our debt. We have paid some of the installment in advance, considering we have now surplus in hand. We don't have any outstanding working capital liabilities. So whatever surplus is generated, we'll keep in margin, keep in capex, and uh, that in uh, our view, we'll keep the balance, right? Got it. Uh, my next and last question is: uh, uh, This quarter was little surprising as uh, the numbers were not, you know, uh, uh, what uh, uh, we were expecting. So, uh, what what is the stable margin that we are looking for uh, for the operations of our company? So you are know, right. We were not. Uh, you know, the, we, as you are aware, we have been mentioning in the last couple of calls that our recovery last year was lower on account of the pest infestation in two of our units, which constituted 80% of our cane crush. So eventually, 
you know, that higher costing would result in reduced margins. Uh, secondly, we have, as a corporate, been making a lot of effort. We did anticipate the sugar season to start crushing earlier this year as compared to last year. So a lot of the work, especially the repair maintenance work, has been front-ended. So some of those expenditures which were loaded onto the Q3 came onto Q2. Uh, both these results have shown, uh, have reduced the profitability here. But going forward, you know, the primary results that we have of the, the primary cane sampling data that is coming in, the cane yields that our people and the teams are reporting, and the sugar prices, are, we hope the sugar prices will continue to remain firm. And North India should be a beneficiary of this because the cane area acreage in the western part of the country is reduced. We do hope to enjoy healthy margins going forward. Got it, sir. Uh, wishing you best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the land of Nitin Ranjin from Frontline Excess Capital. Please go ahead. Okay, thanks for the opportunity. And I believe I'm audible. And uh, so my question is regarding the government export quota for the next year, I mean, for the next season. Do you have any idea as to what the government has? In, I mean, uh, what is the? What, what do you think the? Uh, do you think the government is actually going to increase the quotas? So, I think you know, uh, as I mentioned in my call, we do expect the production numbers to drop to about 29 million tons of sugar to be available next year, which is very close to the consumption numbers. And our opening stock is also, you know, pretty much. Uh, it's in a lower end of the spectrum at about lower than 5.5 million tons of sugar. The following year also we are sort of, uh, we don't see the sugar crushing to rebound consistently because of lack of Vatsali planting in the western region. Keeping this in mind, I would, you know, I do believe that there won't be any export quotas for the coming year at least. Okay, so the, they would be entirely dropped. Okay, got it. That's what your belief is. Thank you. And and one more thing, what what would be the current X mill prices? I mean, this quarter I believe we had realized something like thirty eight point one five or something like that. Have they seen some increase after that? Yeah, the prices are fairly stable here. There's not been. I mean, currently we since we make refined sugar, this is our prices are about thirty eight and a half plus minus. You know, they could fluctuate a little bit, but anything between thirty eight and a half to thirty nine rupees exactly. Okay, and one more question, if I may. Stalin. Well, so you did in your, your opening remarks talk about this multi feed distillery. You said, are you like planning to convert your existing distillery facilities into a multi feed one, or are you like talking about the are you like talking about a new greenfield one? Could you please? Oh, we are, we are, the new on? greenfield distillery that we had announced last uh, during the last calls that we have decided to hold back for some time because we plan to be diverting more cane into sugar rather than ethanol. If we divert mokin into ethanol, we do we will have some capacity left over in our small unit, and we would like to. We are exploring the possibility of converting that into a multi feed distillery. Okay, fine. Thank you. Our existing distillery. Okay, sir. And I, I don't know whether this is, a, this is like a, this is like a repeat question, but while going through your presentation, I kind of found that our ethanol realization on a year on year basis. On a quarterly year on year basis, has fallen from 58.7 per liter to something like 56. May I know the reason for that? I mean, is there any specific reason for that? So, yeah, Nitin, uh, weightage of alcohol sale in this quarter, we have more ENA. Okay. And, and, and second, syrup, uh, as compared to Q1, Q1 we had syrup sale realization, and this, year, uh, this quarter we have B heavy plus ENA. So that is where the, uh, you would see a drop in the sale relation of ethanol in this quarter. So That's if, you, the if you see the ethanol that was uh, made from syrup, diverting of sugar cane or sugar syrup directly, you had a 5 rupee premium over B heavy. When the sugar season stops, so you don't divert any more sugar syrup. So the proportion for this quarter, with, uh, there was no sugar syrup based ethanol, there was entirely B heavy, and there was an ENA percentage which was higher than the corresponding period last year. And I know that I'm taking a lot of your time, but because of this so-called, you have contemplated an, a, a total export ban, do you foresee any, what would be the impact of that on our finances? Because, you know, last year, you know, the export prices were quite high. 
and i believe we had uh, we had fulfilled our export quota is what i recall correctly do you have seen any impact because of this so called export ban well, we do believe that, see, that there was a big differential between the export price and the domestic price so out of the total sugar we produced the entire probably about 15 to 60 about 17% of the sugar was exported sugar we do believe the overall average price this year i mean my personal belief is should be better than last year so keeping into account the cumulative price we should definitely be similar or definitely better than last year that is my belief okay thank you i don't have any further questions and all the best thank you very thank much thank you thank you thank you uh, thank you Next question is from the line of Pramod Kumar from OML P2B. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, my question is regarding the. Pramod, sorry uh, to interrupt you, but your audio is not coming clear. May I request you to come in a better reception area, please? Is it okay now? Uh, so we can hear you, but your voice is breaking a little bit. Ah, uh, I can't. Sorry to hear it. It was uh, seen my music. We can hear you now, Pramod. We can hear you now. Yeah. Please. So my first question is in the capacity extension, which is from 22,000 to 29,500. It's almost 30 percent and more. Uh, what is the um, uh, expected capacity utilization in terms of the expanded capacity, availability of sugarcane, and since the sugarcane requirement will be more, will there be any cost increase in terms of procurement and transportation, and uh, what is the likely recovery we are seeing uh, this year? So our capacity expansion, you are right. We have got a substantial capacity expansion, but we also expect uh, increase in cane availability for us. We do expect about eight uh, percent or eight to ten percent, depending on the final yields and government orders. We hope to crush about eight to ten percent higher than last year. So we do expect a healthy capacity utilization, and the two units, Asmoli and Mirgan, we do hope they will continue to. have a growth in cane availability they have some they have a sizable amount of uh, upside in cane availability and that is a focus area cane development continues to remain a focus area uh, as compared to the cost we don't expect any major deviation on a variable cost owing on a on account of the higher capacities we do see we could potentially some of the fixed cost could come down okay some parts of india we are uh, hearing that uh, the rainfall uh, destruction may cause the availability of uh, sugarcane to the mills and hence uh, their productivity issue uh, any likely impact in up and especially to dbon sorry i couldn't completely understand your question but it was regarding rainfall was it rainfall for the entire country or rainfall in up uh, rain, rainfall for the specific segment area of rampur uh, bayo any impact so for us the rainfall touch wood has been fairly you know it's been quite optimum to be honest so our cane teams and we are where they haven't reported any major or any sort of big damage in our cane planting areas and our cane catchment areas my second question is uh, in respect to the capex uh, i appreciate to bhaji mr prabod sorry your voice is wavering okay uh, in respect to the staff uh, capex promotion sorry but your audio is breaking that that i will i will send the i will send the email i will send the email thank you thank you sir thank you promotion thank you next question is from line of rajesh majumdar from bnk securities please go ahead yeah good afternoon sir thanks for taking my so uh, i had a few questions one is that you mentioned that the realization is lower because of higher sales of ena now i have two questions in this one is the what is the quantum of ena sold in the quarter and what is the average realization also it does that also include the levy uh, ena because i am not aware of this sell levy molasses or levy ena because you also have a country deco business so what is the capture of the levy uh, ena in this uh, realization in the up to 56 rupees so see we have a the our total uh, ena that we sell is pretty much for levy reasons so as you are aware there have been some i mean we did mention in our report and in our disclosure the up state is disputing 
the levies which have been additional levies which the government of UP has as the people producing the heavy to supply. So certain parts of the levy supplies are under litigation, uh, but the undisputed quantity is about 26 lakhs of uh, additional levies as compared to the previous quarter. 26 lakhs of additional ENA has been supplied. Some of this ENA has been supplied for our in-house country liquor business. But that too does not make up for the deficit in realization and viability as compared to supplying it to the ethanol segment. Right. Right. And uh, of the inventory we hold of ethanol stock, uh, what is the breakup between B heavy and uh, ENA? So as on 30th September, we hold uh, 12 lakh liters of ENA and uh, uh, rest is alcohol, ethanol, or dried out of B-heavy. Right. And there is no C-heavy, right? No, no C-heavy. Not, not for the season that went past. But in the current season, okay. we do envisage making a C-heavy. Right. Okay, sir. Uh, and my second question was, sir, you mentioned the fact that ethanol prices can go up this month. However, we also feared that the cane prices can also go up as per the statements made by the UP chief minister in a meeting. So is that also likely to happen? Well, this is an election year, so yeah, we do believe there would be an increase in cane price. Uh, but UP government has been following a fairly rational growth in uh, an increase in cane price. So I will, the FRP grew by, two, by about 10 rupees. And historically, when the FRP was increased by 10 rupees, the ethanol prices would be increased correspondingly to about 2 rupees. So that is our reason for our belief in increasing ethanol price. And uh, looking at election year, looking at the sugar prices, yes, it is reasonable to expect some increase in cane price in UP also. So in the case of our opinion, it would be what, 15 rupees? If it's if it like for like or it should be lo uh, lower? I would Between not 10 like to you know, give a guess over here. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Not in my place to yeah. guess what the chief minister would do. Okay. But you expect something to happen on that front as well. So a large part of the benefit on the sugar price and the alcohol we expect to be negated by the cane price increase. Yeah, I mean one is for ourselves personally. We do. We are hopeful of an improvement in our recovery going back to the previous year's levels or better. So we do hope some part of, I mean, a large part could be offset by better recoveries. Okay. On sugar prices, we are bullish. You know, we do believe there could probably be higher prices to see in the near future. Maybe when the sugar okay. season gets comes to an end, we could see a little prices coming up from here. India okay. is the cheapest, but sugar in India is probably the cheapest in the world today. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, yeah, and my, sir, my last question was that you talked about uh, uh, slowing down on the ethanol sales because of you know, uh, whatever, lower crop and uh, better uh, relations in sugar, etc. So uh, will the overall blending, this is a general question, so will the overall blending program get impacted this year with the lower production as well as the expected rollover impact of El Nino even in sugar year 24-25? Yes, I think it is reasonable. If the cane is less, it is reasonable to presume that the ethanol supply from the cane industry will reduce. But... There is a sizable planting of uh, the rains did catch up towards the end for the rice planting. Mainly, the government has come out with some very attractive policies. So I do believe right. that a uh, sizable amount of capacities for grain and dual feed distilleries has been set up in the country. So if sugar reduces to some extent this year, probably the alternate feed source will uh, make up for the good, and that's probably one of the reasons why we too are exploring the same. And we'll have a clearer answer maybe going down the line in a couple of months. And so in terms of the overall lifting of the OMC as compared to 1Q when there was a, 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 a slowdown in the B heavy lifting, it was second Q overall B heavy lifting was better than 1Q or similar? I mean, personally, we haven't really faced any problems regarding the lifting. And also, if you recollect in this quarter, because hmm. of the FCI, the government, uh, you know, stopping the utilization of FCI rice for hmm. ethanol, that suddenly created a vacuum for the quantity contracted by those distillers. Yeah. So that there was no problem for the sugar industry, at least for supply of alcohol. Okay. Because uh, uh, quarter on quarter, our bee heavy mix has not improved. That's why I'm asking this question. So this quarter, we only had be heavy. Uh, the, 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 the fishing is not on, we won't have syrup. Right, right, right. Correct, correct. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
ओके सर थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम लाइन ऑफ शैलेश कनानी फ्रॉम सेंट्रम ब्रोकिंग लिमिटेड प्लीज गो है Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, uh, sir. I had one question with respect to our opening remarks when we said that uh, sugar production for the ensuing season, that is SSY 24, we are expecting uh, less than 29 million tons. So uh, uh, my understanding is that ISMA's latest projections were 31.7 million tons. So uh, is this a, a revision from ISMA side or uh, it is our internal projection? Chalish, so I mean, I think around around 29 million tons. Too early in the day to you know give final numbers. Uh, you know, after the ISMA's uh, estimates, there was a Kane Commissioner's estimates which came out, which came out to about 30 million tons, if I'm not mistaken. Various trade bodies are continuing to analyze, and you know there's a lot of feet on the ground looking at the Kane availability. So. Looking at you know whatever our teams have analyzed, looking at the data which is coming in from various uh, industry and trade bodies, the num the consensus seems to be in the region of 29 million tons. Now you know looking at the final recovery numbers, final cane crushing numbers and yield numbers, in a country like India, half a million, one million ton could you know you could even see an upside of one million ton or half a million downside. But at this stage, we are pending in about 29. 29 plus minus half a million tons. Okay, uh, to just uh, get these things clear, I think this ISMA projections were somewhere in the mid August, right? 37.7. So the official ISMA estimate has not come down. The King Commission, what you are saying, has come after August and it is projected around 30 million tons. Is that understanding right? That is my understanding. Okay, ISMA, okay, fair enough. ISMA has not given any official estimate after its last estimate in this meeting in August. Okay, fair enough. Thanks a lot, sir. Uh, sir uh, so, uh, in our understanding, which uh, regions, like if I can talk about three major states, UP, uh, Maharashtra, and Karnataka, where do we are seeing a major fall? Because uh, my understanding was UP was broadly doing flattish as compared to last year. So, when we are considering around 29 or less, so where do are we seeing this major fall coming of around 2 to 3 billion tons from the revised estimate of around 31.8 or 31.7? In my opening remarks on this, we said the, the basic projections are the major drop is expected in Maharashtra, Karnataka, and UP is okay. expected to go marginally higher. And okay. you know, again, when you say about production, half a million ton, what amount of sugar will get diverted into ethanol, you could see some small changes in this swing capacity also. Therefore, it will depend on where the final number is this, but yeah, the drop is in UP, Maharashtra, Karnataka, estimated drop is there. UP has an upside estimate. Okay, fair enough, sir. Sir, uh, 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 thanks for that. Uh, sir, second question was with respect to uh, sugar prices. Uh, sugar prices currently seem to be uh, decent at around 38, 150. Uh, how do we see this sugar prices uh, uh, panning out during the crushing season, where normally we see that sugar prices uh, are kind of subdued during those times, given that the expectations of sugar production are lower? How do we see this sugar prices panning out for the next at least couple of quarters when the crushing is going on? I mean, our view is from overall, we do believe prices should remain, uh, average price for the year should remain a little firm, but you're right. If you look at the historical graph during the peak sugar crushing times, prices do tend to soften a little bit from here, and they could probably pick up after that when the final numbers and excess numbers come into play. But I know it's too difficult to give an exact number, what kind of drop and all that, that gets into too much of, you know, become too speculative at this stage. Oh, okay, sir. Thanks a lot. That's all from my side. Thanks a lot. And best of luck. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. Next question is from the line of Nikhil Goel from Shivansh Overseas. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. I have Nikhil. How are you doing? Good afternoon to you. Uh, first of all, best of luck for next quarter. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, actually, I want to ask regarding the MSP. Like, if sugar, your uh, meal is uh, selling the sugar at 38 rupees, is uh, government is planning to increase the MSP on the sugar or no? 
I mean, we haven't heard anything to that uh, uh, effect. Okay. And this is it. also this is an election year. I don't think it will be reasonable to expect an increase in MSP at least in the near future. Okay. And uh, sir, uh, like, uh, can you just tell me uh, what is your trade table? Trade receivable, you are. You said. Yes. Yes. Trade receivable. So sugar, sugar, we don't have any trade receivable that is almost against the payment. Uh, yes, it's in all supplies to the ONCs. We have 15 to 20 days trade receivable from them. We don't have any. That is also as per the payment terms, as per the terms of trade. Terms of trade. So there is really pretty much our business. We don't really have any substantial receivables in the, or beyond terms of trade would be negligible. Okay, okay. Uh, and this, uh, my last question is, sir, uh, like... Uh, can you just put some light on your inventory also? So uh, uh, last year, as of 30th September, we had 10.6 lakh quintals. This year, we have 1 lakh quintals as of 30th September of sugar. So I think uh, this, is, this is also the exact inventory statuses have been uploaded on our website, on our investor presentation. So okay. sugar is lower, the molasses and ethanol is higher. And for those okay. exact numbers, you know, we would request you to look at the investor presentation which we've uploaded on our website. It's all there. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Nikhil. Thank you, Nikhil. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Naitik Mota from Sequin Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir, and thank you for the opportunity. So, sir, I have two questions. Firstly, regarding the government has uh, applied a uniform GST and reduced it to 5% on molasses. So, how will that impact our business in terms of uh, profitability or margins going forward? So, yeah. Hi, Nitin. So, the, uh, in the reduction of GST on molasses from 28% to 5%, actually, that will not impact us. This will uh, benefit the buyer of the molasses who are buying like standalone distilleries and uh, to some extent the country liquor manufacturer, the IMF man manufacturer, whereby their cost of production will get reduced because they don't have, they have neg negative carry on GST output, right? They don't get the set off of GST on inputs against the output. So we'll not be impacted much because we are not se seller, but it, this will definitely benefit the standalone distilleries and so as Lalin said, we don't sell our molasses. Our molasses is entirely for self-consumption, for ethanol and our levy obligation. Okay, sir. Also, sir, regarding our country liquor segment, so our country liquor segment has really increased in volumes uh, as compared to last year. So what are our plans going forward regarding this segment? Do we plan to... Uh, uh, do we plan to launch some our some of our own brand going forward or increase our capacity in the segment going forward? Anything on that? We already have some brands and our country liquor segment. We are focused first to fulfill our entire levy obligation. We don't uh, want we at this point the company doesn't envisage getting into country liquor segment beyond its own internal levy obligation. We want to focus on our sugar and biofuel segment and. Uh, we still have some time, some sort of way to go before we 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 get the sales, which will completely offset our heavy obligations. And we are working hard to increase that sort of uh, basket, uh, our share in the basket of country liquor consumption in UP. Okay, sir. Okay, that was helpful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Participants, start and want to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Pawan Sharma, individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to uh, 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 get the answers from my following query. Like, uh, my first query is, uh, on the, what is the cost of the production for the sugar in the upcoming season? Like, uh, uh, we have the sales price uh, 38.5 rupees per kg. What, is the, what will be the cost of production for the sugar for the upcoming season? So, I mean, uh, you know, cost of production of sugar, we can't really give you a number at this stage because we don't know what the revised gain price would be and what the revised and what the recoveries would be. Uh, okay. But we do believe that the we should hopefully have better recoveries than last year. This is our belief at this stage. Too early in the day to really call it out. 
Uh, yeah, but uh, you have any idea like uh, in our previous season we are not going we are not going beyond 10 percent of the recovery. No, I understand. So that was, this, that 10 percent was net recovery because that was on account of the amount of ethanol we diverted. Yeah. This year we do expect to divert less sugar into ethanol. So our gross recovery last year I think was 11.02 percent if I'm not mistaken. For the season 11 per year. So that is the gross recovery there. Okay. Uh, taking into account the ethanol diversion and everything else, we do hope to be better than that. Okay, sir, fine, thank you. Another thing, sir, like uh, we are returning from the, the downfield expansion of the industry, and uh, I understand that the uh, the business is uh, for ethanol now in future, like government is committed to uh, expand the blending. So, are we not uh, going to lag behind with the years uh, in installing this uh, distillery for ethanol? So, you know, you're right that the government, there is a lot of tailwind in this business, and we also have been, uh, but you know, this is purely in order to ensure adequate cap asset utilization and sweating of assets. Yeah. If we do believe, see, the, region, the western part, if you see India, the predominant sugar is either produced in UP and then Maharashtra, Karnataka. Yeah, yeah. If Maharashtra, Karnataka, the production estimates are lower and the sugar prices remain firm, then we do believe our num we are better off making more sugar than diverting sugar into ethanol. So at this stage, we had not really go made any substantial capexes that we could that we needed to completely see through the project. And if we do divert less cane into ethanol, we will have ideal capacity in our small unit which we want to utilize, which we are exploring multi feedstock. Uh, but as the sugar scenario recovers, as our overall cane growth continues to increase, we should be able to uh, establish that distillery maybe a year, year or some, maybe a little later. But it's better to be a bit more conservative with distillery capacity at this stage rather than you know being aggressive at this stage. That is what our firm belief is. Yeah, uh, thanks, sir. My next question is about this uh, infection, the press infection on the last year sugar uh, production which is affected to us. So what kind of measures we have taken to ensure that this uh, this time this thing is not going to happen? We've been very we've been mentioning about this for some time if you recollect in most of my calls we've been talking about it and if you recollect last call I did mention that this year's crop we are seeing fairly the pest uh, the borers to be fairly controlled been pretty much negated. Okay. Uh, therefore uh, I mean, at this point, the cane is pretty much, the tattoo cane is ready, is ready for harvesting in, in a couple of, in a, maybe a month or so. And I'm glad to report that there is no real negligible border infestation this year. It's, it's but very good news for us. vigilant, they are looking at everything else, and, you know, we continue to be very vigilant for any sort of pest or disease. And we do hope we should be able to, you know, control anything that happens at a very early stage. Uh, what kind of, uh, like, uh, 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 Cane uh, effort we are using to increase our cane productivity, like in the catchment area, what kind of seeds, for, I don't know what, what exactly we call it, which kind of uh, seeds we are using that uh, they can give us a better uh, cane productivity? If you see our cane, you know, if you look at the detail of our q and p &L statements also, we see a regular, uh, you know, increase in our cane development and cane activity, cane development activities. Uh, 238, of course, is the predominant variety right now, but from last year we have been actively increasing the acreage of the other two promising varieties, which are 118 and 15023. Okay. But, you know, these varieties do take a couple of years to reach a sizable amount of, to make an impact on our crush and recovery. So what kind of, like, uh, the new, uh, what will be the proportionate of this uh, new uh, variety versus other varieties in our existing season, like it's go, it's coming season? This year, this year, whatever variety we have, it basically be used entirely for seed next year. Yeah. So we'll probably start seeing some impact the following year. Fine, fine, fine. Okay, sir, thanks a lot, and uh, wish you a very uh, uh, healthy season. Thank you very much, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have the last question from the line of Udit Gupta, individual investor. Please go ahead. Sir? Hi, Udit. Good afternoon to you. Uh, sir, uh, my question was, sir, when, do we, when are we planning to start our crushing? 
the we, I, I mentioned early November is when we hope uh, we think our, all our plants will start pre Diwali before Diwali. Last week of October to early November this is when we expect to start fresher. The final dates will be out. Again, sampling data is you know being regularly done. We know when our neighbors are starting around that we'll also start. Sir, is this due to any late trains or is is this normal, sir? So if you recollect, last year was the time when there were late trains and the, de the fashion got delayed to about 10th, 7th, between 7th and 10th, around the 10th of November. This year we do think the season will be at least a week, 10 days prior to last year. And uh, so this, are we planning any ethanol from cane juice in the season, sir, or only from B and C molasses? We have the option to divert at cane juice ethanol. Uh, at this stage, we are we do believe there is a reduced possibility of diverting cane juice into ethanol. But you know, last year we started off diverting cane juice into ethanol, which we will not be doing this year. When okay. the numbers become a little bit more clearer around December, January, and if we do believe there is a reason to divert, we'll take a call there. So could this happen with other mills, and therefore the sugar production in India could go up because of lower diversion to ethanol? Like from the number that we are estimating. No, I think the number. I mean, you know, everybody has does, does their own uh, equations and uh, numbers. But if you look at the overall estimates in the trade and in the country's balance sheet, uh, I think people have already pegged a marginally lower number into ethanol as compared to last year. Uh, uh, diversion of sugar into ethanol as compared to last year. Last year was about 4.1 million tons. I think this year people are pegging anything between 3.8. Plus minus one one point two million tons. So I don't think it will have a the big impact will be the final yields in uh, Maharashtra, Karnataka, and UP. The yield and recoveries over here. I mean, the yield and recovery they will be the major factors. But, I got your point, sir. Yeah. Sir, sir, you just mentioned sir, that last year's loss recovery was about eleven point zero two. So what was our recovery earlier before this pest infestation started happening to us? The year before that, we were 11.48, if I'm not wrong, 11.48. Okay. So, so approximately, if if things turn back to normal, we could go closer to 11 and a half percent. Fingers crossed. Uh, yes. Correct. And 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 sir, last year our crushing was approximately 39 lakh ton, if I'm right, sir. For the sugar season, we were we had done uh, 42 lakh uh, 42 lakh ton for the sugar season. Oh, for the, uh, out of that, uh, six was diverted to ethanol. Yeah, for, for the full sugar season. When we talk about sugar season, we had done 42 lakh tons. About 42 lakh, lakh tons were diverted into ethanol. We are hoping okay. uh, of about an 8 10% jump this year, and let's, yeah, so for the best. So we could do in excess of 45 lakh tons, I think. Okay. Again, yeah. <laughs> that is what we are internally yeah. trying and targeting to do. We can do okay. as your wish. <laughs> And sir, this uh, country liquor sales, sir, uh, in the first half of this financial year, we've done about 12 lakh cases, whereas in entire FY23, we had done 12 lakh cases. So, so we've done the, almost the same quantity in the first half of the year. So is this all due to levy molasses or sir, like going for the next six months, uh, is this expected to keep this run rate? So we do hope to maintain this run rate because our levy obligation requires more than the 2 lakh uh, cases per month. Per month. Last year, when did our country liquor business start? Somewhere in July. So our country liquor business started in July 2022. So that is why you oh. see the numbers to be different to... Uh, but 2 lakhs is a fairly healthy... You know, we are in the top 10 country liquor sellers in the country, in the state today. Okay. And once again, I mentioned, you know, our appetite or our desire for our country liquor business is only to offset our levy molasses. Okay. We don't see at ourselves becoming a country liquor player, player by, you know... So, so, so two lakh cases a month would almost cover our levy molasses part. No, it's still, I think the government continues to increase the levy percentage. I think okay. right now we still be about. Uh, I think we still have some uh, around around sixty percent. We are at sixty percent of levy obligation facing in sight. Of the two lakh would cover about fifty percent. Yes. Okay. And so, uh, with this note that you had given me, accounts about this twenty crores impact, sir. So it is not final as yet, but in case it does happen, then we have to book it in the next quarter. Yeah, we hope we don't have to, but yeah, that could be a potential. That is a potential risk. All right, sir. Uh, and sir, just another small point, sir. In case of any clarification in future, sir, 
Uh, where can I get back to the company at? So we have our website. We have a link for the investor relations. We have a contact details of our investor relations desk. Uh, our numbers are mentioned on our website, so you can reach out on okay. any of those numbers here. Yeah? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Goel for closing comments. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, for joining this earnings call. Uh, and as we mentioned earlier, if you have any more questions, please do not hesitate to contact us or our investor relations team at EY. Uh, and have a wonderful day and all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Gautam. Thank you, Nalin. Thank you. On behalf of SKP Securities Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.